Welcome inside with the insiders. Tom Pellicero, Ian Rappaport, that is Mike Garofolo, who uh, looks like he's dried out since last night in Charlotte, Mike. <laughs> Wasn't that bad. It was just like a little mist. Uh, it was actually heavier rain this morning, and now it's making its way up here to Jersey. What is that sound? Is someone getting tackled? It sounds like uh, someone is mic'd up. And it was Ian, wasn't it? Yeah. I could tell. I could see his face. No, it was not me. What are you doing? Uh, hold on. I have some questions. So I can't help but notice uh, that Tom is dressed like someone who's trying out for the role of extra on Beverly Hills 90210 season three, uh, which means that Tom is probably hosting the Rich Eisen show. Uh, Tom, how was your week playing host? It was a lot of fun. Uh, big shoes to fill, obviously, for Rich, but a fantastic studio, like, blew my mind in El Segundo, everything that they've, they've got over there. So we had a ton of great guests, including, uh, my, one of my oldest friends, Jim Mahoney, who is now an actor, writer, director at a movie that's coming out, hitting select theaters today on AMC+. Plus. You can download it. It's called Bar Fight. It has Melissa Fumero from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So he was in studio as one of the guests today, which is one of the more surreal, uh, that's cool. surreal experiences that I've had here. Okay, but enough about me, enough about other shows. This is the show right here, The Insiders. Let's take a look at the latest headlines, specifically some injury updates on some pretty important people. Kyler Murray, a game-time decision against the Rams because of his hamstring, according to Cliff Kingsbury, who I feel like has a lot of game-time decisions. Uh, Matthew Stafford, questionable yeah. against the Cardinals. That's always dictated with the concussion protocol by exactly when he gets cleared. Josh Allen, Listed as questionable, uh, he made a cameo appearance, at least at the end of practice today, with a jersey on, some type of wrap on his elbow. We'll see what chance, if any, he's got. Otherwise, it's Case Keenum against the Vikings. T.J. Watt says he's playing Sunday against the Saints, back from that pec injury. Does not expect that he's going to be on a pitch count. And as Ian reported earlier today, Shaquille Leonard, the Colts linebacker, who has been through so much physically over the last couple of years, placed on injured reserve, meaning he is out for at least the next four games because that ongoing issue with his back and his ankle. Uh, let's get right to another story, though, that came off of the Thursday night game, the Panthers and the Falcons. Arthur Smith, speaking after the game, said that no, he did not consider pulling Marcus Mariota. Mariota had an interesting evening, uh, attempted a pass from a position that's not uh, normally seen a whole lot in football. Do we believe, Ian, that the Falcons are going to be sticking with Marcus Mariota or with the long week, could this be Desmond Ritter time? I mean, if you are going to go to Desmond Ritter, this would make sense why. But this kind of – well, f first of all, I don't know. I do not know, and I don't think they know what they're going to do right now. This is one of those things coaches are going to go back and be like, was this an aberration or is this now simply what we're going to be seeing? And I would say similar situation – the Carolina Panthers seeing P.J. Walker go out and be terrible last week. So you know what? Let's just stick with him. Played pretty good last night and ended up getting the win. So was this an aberration? Did he just kind of freak out a little bit and is he going to be fine? But look, the Falcons are 4-6. and six. They're not great. They're in a division that's not great. The problem is, guys, as you know, if they're going to go to Desmond Ritter, that's it. That is the ball game. That's it on Marcus Mariota. You're playing a rookie to see what you have and for the future. But then the other thing is you also might know what you have, which may be why they haven't made the move yet. Yeah, I mean, it was it was not a great weather night, but uh, the, you, you could throw the ball. I mean, depending on the time of the game, the, the weather the, kind of went like this a little bit. It was heavy at times, then it would lighten up. It's, it's that spotty rain. They expected that coming in because that's the way when these tropical storms break up, uh, you get the system coming through. Uh, so there were times where, you know, balls should have been completed and put in the right spot, and they weren't. And, look, he was also under pressure a ton, too. I mean, he had to make some quick decisions. He made some poor decisions, such as throwing the football off of his uh, actual back, not his back foot, but his actual back. Uh, but there were other times where there was a ball to Kyle Pitts up the left side where Pitts didn't even know that it was coming out because he was under pressure right away. The offensive line did not play well. So when I hear Arthur Smith talk about the team aspect of this, I believe he's right. That protection was not good enough to allow him enough time to make throws at times. Now, that again, he was not great. There were other times where there were throws that should have been made. He threw at Kyle Pitts' feet one time and then 10 feet over his head another time. They tried to get the ball to Pitts. He had eight targets last night. He only had two catches. I don't know how 
or 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 when they're yeah, going to be well, able to I, finally I mean, sort of, utilize is, Kyle Pitts' more, skill set. Isn't this more alarming than the quarterback thing? Sorry to interrupt, but isn't it? Which part? The Kyle Pitts part. I mean, he first of all, he was blocking on the fourth and ten, which whatever, that's a whole different thing. But inability to get the ball to one of the more dynamic playmakers, like isn't that? That's yeah, but good. there was a there was a there was a quick play on a quick slant that again the ball should have been here and instead it's up here, and then there was one that on the first drive of the game where he, it was at his ankles instead of right here. They, we had to make a quick decision, Mariota did, but you got to get that ball to him. So it's a combination. It's a little bit of everything. I think I, I don't look doesn't look to me like there's enough plays designed for Pitts. Like, there, that one that was 10 feet over his head was designed beautifully. He came across the formation, and I'm like, oh, there it is. And then he just fired high. So Arthur Smith, if he's sitting here and we say, you're not giving the ball to Kyle Pitts, if he's speaking truthfully, he would say, I dialed that one up beautifully. My quarterback threw over his head for no reason. So it's a little bit of everything for the Falcons right now. They're not a great team. Like, the fact that they're in contention in their division because the, the division is so poor is why we're even talking about them. Otherwise, if the Buccaneers are taking care of business, we really wouldn't even be having this conversation at this point. Credit to the Panthers as well. A team that has every yeah. reason to be packing it in and not be competitive. <laughs> they trade Kis Christian McCaffrey, ostensibly their best player. Their run game has actually improved since then. Statistically, yeah. they're a much better running football team. Uh, with some of the other guys that they've been plugging into the lineup here. So Wilkes is coaching to try to get this job uh, four days after a brutal performance against the Bengals where P.J. Walker puts up a 0.0 .0 passer rating. Wilkes says, I'm going to stick with P.J. Walker. I'm going to go with the guy that I think gives us the best opportunity to win. And you see the rushing numbers right there. They're averaging yeah. close to 70 more rushing yards per game since trading McCaffrey here. Now, we'll see what plays out with the quarterback situation going forward. They do want to see Sam Darnold at some point. Baker Mayfield was out there headbutting guys without a helmet on after the game yesterday, which you kind of like that. At least I do. I mean, don't put yourself as Al Michaels put it in concussion protocol. But you like the fact that Baker, who we've talked so much, and so many people who say, you know, he's going to, when things aren't going well, he tanks out. He's He looks like he's into it. He looks like he's fired up because he knows – if he's going to play anywhere this year, it's going to be for the Panthers. And if they're winning, that gives him a chance to play relevant football here, Mike. A couple of things here. Uh, one, I just tweeted this out. The Panthers, 47 rushing attempts. The most for a Ben McAdoo called offense uh, ever. Previously, it was 42 back in 2014. Wow. McAdoo's a guy who's been criticized for trying to throw the ball too much. And it's because they had a skill set when he was with the Giants and a, a wide receiver in Odell Beckham that they tried to take advantage of by being pass heavy. That's not the case now. They have a good offensive line. You had a bad weather game. McAdoo leaning on the running game, proving he's a versatile offensive coordinator. You know, a lot of jokes made about Ben McAdoo over the years. I think he's showing his stuff as an offensive coordinator, number one. Number two, we talked uh, about Wilkes and what they were able to do on a short week to put that Bengals game behind them. Now, I know that that Bengals game, there were a couple of factors, not the least of which was Derek Brown, their defensive tackle, tried to play sick in that game, and he just didn't have it from jump that, that game, only played 22. And then he was back last night to his regular dominant self. But for Wilkes to be able to get to the players, to challenge them, to play well on both sides of the football, particularly up front, and get them to flush it, that was basically the gist of it. He said, look, guys, it's time to move on. Right? I know it's only four days, but it's time to move on and forget that. You're going to have those games when you're an interim coach where things just get out of hand. And get, so a lot of times that snowballs into three, four, five in a row. For Wilkes to really do that, I, I think it's, it's early, but you continue to do stuff like this. I think you're making a case to be a head coach long term. Forget about what he did in Arizona. He never got a fair shake there. I think he's got a shot to make a statement down the stretch here. And you mentioned Ben McAdoo here. It's probably not an accident that Matt Rule's fiery, and this is not an offense to Matt, but he, he wanted to be involved in the offense, and that goes back to when Joe Brady was the offensive coordinator. This is Ben calling Ben's offense now, and it seems like he is in a better rhythm right now as a play caller, something he hasn't really done in five years going back to his, his last year with the Giants. All right, let's move on to the Raiders. Uh, they have had a week. Darren Waller on the injured reserve. Hunter Renfro on the injured reserve. Blake Martinez told the team before practice on Wednesday he was retiring, eventually announced that himself on Thursday afternoon that he is done in the NFL. They're a team that's trying to get themselves going here, trying to gather some momentum. Uh, Ian, what, what, do we, what do we make of what's happening right now in that building? And in your mind, 
How much, if at all, can you consider Josh McDaniels to be on the proverbial hot seat? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't believe that McDaniels is on the hot seat. I really don't. I mean, he came in with Dave Ziggler together. I know players really like him. That doesn't matter. I mean, who cares? But players really like him. They seem to have bought in. No, it matters. You, know, playing. you think it does? Well, go ahead. Make your point. I'm sorry. Make your point. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, no, I don't know. I'm actually, no, I, believe me, I always literally wonder this because sometimes you'll have players who be like, oh, they should never fire this coach, and they fire him, and the team starts playing better, and you're like, oh, well, that didn't mean it. But, like, players really do like him. Defense is not playing great. It feels like a lot of the issues are on the defensive side of the ball more so than the offensive side of the ball, just based on kind of, you know, my feelings on this thing. But we'll see. Like, if there's a change, I think that would probably make more sense a change coming on defense, but I, I don't get the sense that that Josh McDaniels is in any trouble. Um, the Jonathan Abram release is so interesting to me because he is a talented player. I like him as a person. My guess is he ends up as a linebacker to be one of the long list of really good box safeties who become a much better linebacker than a safety. I wonder if they cover better this week without him because he was playing a lot and they were not covering a lot of people. So that's going to kind of be an interesting thing to watch this week. I'm laughing because the Raiders have liter literally just tweeted out that Jacob Hollister signed, and uh, Tom had that the day before. It's, a, it's an inside joke. Good scoop, Tom. Uh, backing up, uh, Josh scoop. McDaniels and why it matters, because it's not like his first – like if it was a repeat of when he was the head coach of the Broncos, I'd be like, look, this guy just ain't going to cut it, right? Just trying to be Belichick, has no idea to be a head, how to be a head coach. It's different now. It's not that same kind of atmosphere, which is a good thing. That's why I'm saying to you, Ian, and I know what you're talking about. A lot of times you hear, oh, they fired the coach. The, player loved, the players love those coaches, but then they actually play better. Like sometimes you got to hate your coach a little bit. I get all that. But the point is Josh McDaniels had to do this a different way. And so at least he seems to have conquered that part of it, right? It's not like, oh, my God, I hate this guy. He's an absolute tyrant. He has no idea what he's doing. So that part is why I think it's important for Josh McDaniels. The other thing is, um, the, the Raiders uh, and, and Mark Davis, do they really want to eat all that money that's going to be left on this contract? It's going to be a lot of money to pay him and then pay somebody else. Some owners I'd, and, and franchises, I'd say, yeah, whatever. Like David Tepper, I think he could probably eat some money, and Frank, frankly, he's doing that with Matt Rule. Uh, I, I don't put the Raiders uh, in that department. Uh, and one more thing I'll add, uh, just based off of Twitter, which I know is a dangerous thing to do, but just based off of Twitter and seeing the reaction, the Raiders fan base is out on McDaniels already. Like, I, I, I don't know how much that's going to be a factor, but, man, they are crushing him on Twitter, which is kind of surprising to me because I thought maybe they'd give him a little bit more time. But they, they expected to be in, competi uh, in uh, uh, competitive right away. I remember talking about this back in February when he took the job. I think that was early February. The danger for Josh McDaniels or any other coach taking that Raiders job was they made the playoffs last year. They were a good team. And you're looking at a veteran group. They gave everybody extensions. They kind of gave themselves this two-year window to win. So inevitably, when you're coming from New England, and Josh has learned a lot from his stop in Denver, but when you're coming from that structure of that program, you're going to change things. All right, you're, Even if you're not trying to be a Bill Belichick clone, you are going to change things because it's the way that you understand the NFL and football to work. So when Josh comes in and is saying, hey, even though you guys had success last year, we're doing these things differently. The practice schedule is going to be different. The offense is going to be different. You better have success early on in the season or else, whether it's the fans, the locker room, whatever, you run the risk that people are going to lose faith very quickly here. So we probably shouldn't be surprised that it's been bumpy for the Raiders, but you go out and you hire Josh and you trade for Devontae Adams and you sign Chandler Jones. It's not like you look like you're rebuilding in this thing. It's a veteran group that is not winning enough football games right now. Our friend Bridget Condon is going to join us after. She's been blowing us off for months. We've been trying to schedule her. She's always yeah. too busy. Nice that she actually Char nice Covering that she the Chargers, which is a full-time a full time job. Looks very relaxed, too. I think that's my jacket <laughs> that she's wearing. Uh, Bridget joins us next to talk about the Chargers, the Bills, something really interesting to do with Naeem Hines not that long ago. A whole lot more when the Insiders returns. Welcome back to The Insiders. Tom Pellicero, Ian Rappaport, Mike Garofolo. Pleased to be joined right now by our NFL Network colleague, Bridget Condon. Bridget, I joked before the break that uh, you've been blowing us off. In reality, we don't have enough guests. We've been wanting to have you on. We've been dying to have you on. 
Appreciate you being here and for uh, keeping up and really backing me up with the bomber jacket aesthetic. <laughs> Tom, I was told in order to come on this show, it was like a more cool, chill, relaxed kind of vibe. I had to have a really cool outfit. I know producer Larry Campbell always comes into the office in these like sweet sweatsuits. So I've just been working to try and find a cool enough outfit to come on the show. So it's taken me about two months, but here we are. I hope it, I hope it works out. Nailed it. Nailed it. Oh, is this me? Yeah. I thought you were going to ask the first question, oh Tom. Nope. I Read guess I text, didn't pay Mike. attention to Go the ahead. group chat. That's on me. Embarrassing. Uh, Bridget, you are, I see those lightning bolts behind you. You are covering the Chargers, a very interesting team that once again is trying to battle through injuries and all kinds of stuff. Seems like it's an annual occurrence for the Chargers, and somehow they do it. They stay in contention. So uh, give us a peek at what's happening there right now and what you expect from this team down the stretch. It's crazy to think that the Chargers are 5-3, and three, right, with all the injuries that they've had, and then they lose Austin Johnson, key part of that D-line this week. But this is what I feel like the Chargers – can really take off in the second half of the season because some of these big injuries that happened in the beginning of the season are starting to work themselves out. Joey Bosa, he's still on IR, but he's inching closer to being back at practice. He's in the building right now. Mike Williams, he I talked to him in the locker room this week. He's dealing with an ankle injury. He said that he feels good. He hopes to be practicing next week. And then Keenan Allen, I know that's been a lot longer than we thought, but hopefully at some point he figures out uh, what's going on there and is able to practice. And Justin Herbert, Remember, he'd been playing this whole time, but he really had still been dealing with that rib fracture last weekend against the mm. Falcons. I think we finally saw him start to heal. He made some throws that he hadn't been able to make the past couple weeks. So the potential for this team, I don't think we've seen them play their best football yet. So there's a lot of positives and the fact that they've had basically every single starter on their team go down and still manage to be five and three, I think is a positive sign for this organization. I was thinking about that Herbert thing. You know, he has looked kind of not quite like himself recently, and you're like, kind of why? I for Injury was like six years ago. You kind of forget about that. <laughs> um, so that'll be interesting to see. Another thing that'll be interesting to see is whatever in the world you did with Naeem Hines. Now, sources tell me that it's something <laughs> called agro yoga, which I don't know what that is. I did hot yoga once, almost passed out. Um, they almost had to call the ambulance for me. You did Whoa. agro yoga. What actually <laughs> is happening right now? What is happening? Um, I don't know. Like, for me, this is hilarious because we did this. So I used to uh, be a reporter in Raleigh, and one of the segments that I got to do was I worked out with prof athletes, which was cool, and we did, like, trending different workouts. So this is called acro yoga. It's like acrobatics and acro. yoga. They were, yeah, they were like, okay, you're going to hold Naeem Hines, and I'm thinking – this man is worth tons of money. You want me to, I, I, I'm not an athlete, like a professional one. I'm going to drop him. And then the Colts are going to be calling me at the time. So it was uh, rather frightening. I'm glad it's over. The funniest thing, this happened just before COVID. So we ended up not even airing this piece. So I went through all that anxiety of trying not to kill an NFL what? player and it never even aired. Well, now it but is. Now, here it you is. You need to air it. What? <laughs> it's pretty great. I, I, yep, I'm <laughs> out did. on all of that, but that's, uh, that is very cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't have any further comments daughters. on it. Don't do that on your Saturdays, <laughs> getting ready well, for game day morning. with my daughters, just... <laughs> but they're, they're very, they're much smaller than Naheem Hines. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I big can, into I can call it yoga. I can claim that. it as a workout. <laughs> we have not gotten to that just yet. Okay, one more thing, Bridget, before we let you go here. <laughs> Uh, we, the insiders, are now on TikTok. Don't know if you follow us, uh, but anyone else Ooh, can check the QR code that hopefully is going to be on the screen momentarily here. It is at the Insiders NFL. There it is. So just hold up your phone really close to it. You'll be able to follow us on TikTok. A lot of fun stuff there. Uh, you've been doing – Mike doesn't follow us near to Ian. Uh, you've I'm been doing TikTok, some though. the tiny Mike videos. I've seen several of these. Uh, I, do you have the tiny Mike? There it is. That. There it is. Let, just give me give me the idea where you came up with this specific idea, and uh, I think, you know, how, do, how are we this cool on TikTok? Okay, in order to be this cool, get the bomber jacket from H and M. No, just kidding. Um, you have to buy the mini mic from Amazon, and I think people just. I, what I've realized is I don't understand what people want. It's like I tell them how the Chargers can get past Nick Bosa. Nobody cares. I tell them that they're playing Shooter in the locker room. Everyone goes crazy. So whatever you think that people want to know, it's the opposite. And some reason the tiny mic makes Fair. people more interested in it than a, than a 
I don't know, a lavalier or a stick mic. I've been asking NFL Network if I can uh, do like my game reports with this, but it hasn't been approved yet. (laughs) That would be sensational. It's it's Tom. Very, very important, Tom. It's called Mini Mic. It's not Tiny Mic. I don't appreciate (laughs) Tiny Mic. Uh, Tiny uh, Mike is what it says in the script that I was sent right here. So I'm not taking this one on me. It says Tiny Mike in the script. Tiny Mike is something different. I have huge hands. So, uh, yeah, but I don't know. Um, But I know you guys are on TikTok, and one thing I wanted to tell you – one of the trends right now is where your daughters or sons, you give them the phone and they think that they're filming you doing Taylor Swift's love story, like a song and a dance. But when actually like they're holding up the camera like this and they're filming themselves and you get their reaction to watching you sing and dance that song. It's yeah. going viral. A lot of people are doing it. I know you guys are dads. Maybe give it a try. I, yeah, I love it. By the way, uh, I'm, I'm taking a total left turn here, but I don't know if we have more time. But uh, <laughs> we don't. Folks at watching at home or wherever you're watching, uh, Bridget was the one that asked the question of Cooper Cup that led to that great soundbite last year, the very technical breakdown uh, from Cooper Cup. She also had a terrific interview with Melvin Gordon uh, earlier this season. Um, have you, I mean, you ask great questions. You do. Like sometimes, I, I, that's one area of my game that I need to clean up. I may have to have you be my mentor there. Did, did you have a mentor? <laughs> Uh, in that regard, did someone help you uh, become a, a really good post-game interviewer? Because you're killing it. I think I'm just a really naturally curious person. I remember vividly sitting at the table with my aunt and uncle when I was like eight, and my uncle went to my mom and was like, this girl asks so many questions. Why does she keep asking me so many questions? So I think it just, <laughs> I don't know, something I've done. But uh, shout out to Lindsay Zardiac. She actually is my mentor, and she's helped me through so much of this. That is fantastic. Well, keep Bridget. it up and... Uh... Mike, we got to wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, we're running. We're running. Goodbye. On a very tight schedule. Bridget, Bridget. thank you very much for being here. We'll talk to you again soon. Some more injury updates and a farewell (laughs) to a legend coming up after this on the inside. I have gone from SoFi Stadium to the Santa Monica Pier to I think this is LAX, where I'm headed momentarily after this show. As we get some in and out. (laughs) In and out, right there. There we go. Looks looks beautiful. Uh, so a few other injury updates. Aaron Jones off the injury report for the Packers. That's significant. Ryan Tannehill limited in practice. So we'll see exactly, according to Mike Vrabel, where that goes here. Jahan Dotson back, full participant in practice for the Commanders. So that's potentially important as they get ready for a Monday night game. Uh, we lost a legend today. The comedian Gallagher. Dying at age 76, famous for smashing watermelons with hammers. Why do we bring that up here? Because Gallagher also has a part in NFL lore, thanks to Mike McCarthy, before a game against the Vikings a couple of years ago, bringing in watermelons to a team meeting room, having players smash them with a hammer, and then me delivering one of my favorite ever reports on TV to explain uh, all of this. So... Gallagher, any, any final thoughts on, on Gallagher, Mike? Uh, he had great material. Like, the, the watermelon thing was, uh, you know, his shtick. But if you ever watch his stand-up, and, uh, and hopefully you take a time to do that today to honor his memory, he had terrific material. I loved Gallagher. I thought he was, he was great. Rest in peace, pal. I, uh, I, my memories of Gallagher involved me at, like, 12, 15 at night on my, like, little TV that had the VCR under it watching Gallagher – Quietly, so my parents wouldn't know that I was still awake. Rest in peace, Gallagher. Remarkable career, remarkable life. RIP to Gallagher. All right, thank you very much for joining us on this edition of The Insiders. We aired a half hour early tonight because Bench with Bonetta did not have an episode. We'll be back at our normal time, 8 p.m. Eastern, every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, across all fast streaming platforms. The NFL app, also every episode posts afterwards on YouTube. Follow us on TikTok at The Insiders NFL. Enjoy week 10, Mike. Come on, it's Just the weekend. Go ahead. No, goodbye. Goodbye. Bring it around for Mike Garofolo. Top of the